Harry Roubaix, also known as the Hell of the North, is one of the oldest bike races around and one of the toughest. Brutal cobblestone section, mud, dust, crashes, and even a velodrome. This race has it all. Every year we see the world's best riders riding some of the world's best bikes, some of which are designed specifically to ride across these brutal cobblestones. But how would a cheap bike fare on this kind of terrain? Would it survive? You think what I'm thinking? Reveal the cheap bikes. Today, myself and Alex are ditching the superbikes for some cheap bikes. And GCN has sent us on a mission with just £50 in our pockets to find a £50 bike that could cope with the last 50 kilometres of Paris-Roubaix. A very brutal 50 kilometres. And there was no chance we were riding the whole thing, so we're going to stick to 50 kilometres. But £50? Not, not much, a lot it? of money for a bike. No, it doesn't get you much, does it? Um, should we take a look at our bikes? Let's do it. This is what I've managed to get my hands on. This is a Triaps. Um, got it from Facebook Marketplace. It was on sale for £75. I said to the guy, right, no messing about. Can I have it for 50 quid? He said, if you pick it up tomorrow, it's yours. Long story short, I got it. Um, so yeah, it's um, got 21 speed, as you can see on the sticker there. It's also got um, Shimano equipped. It also says lightweight aluminium frame and another sticker. Can confirm, it's not very lightweight. It is, it is quite heavy. Uh, it also says speed. Um, so I'm guessing it's gonna be quite fast. Um, but yeah, I haven't changed anything on the bike. I haven't even washed it. The chain is rusty. Um, so yeah, I did change the angle of handlebars because they were like pointing up in the sky. But yeah, keeping the pedals on, keeping the saddle on. Let's see if I can survive. And this is my cheap bike for the day. Now we set out with a budget of 50 pounds. You all know how much I spent on this thing? Absolutely nothing. Now, some of you may well recognize this bike from last summer. It was the bike I used on the GCN Cheap Bike Challenge. Since then, I've actually stripped all of the paint off it and made a tech video where I tried uh, mirror polishing the frame, hence why some of it looks quite good, some of it not so good. Now, we've got a single speed setup. I've got a 44 tooth chain on the front and a 16 tooth sprocket on the back. And while we're down here, you will notice that I have fitted my Wahoo Powerlink pedals to this bike. It didn't have any pedals on it, and you know, it's all about gathering the data. So really, it is a little bit unfair that I've fitted nearly 1,000 euro pedals to my bike, but you know, I don't want to miss out on this valuable data. It's got a carbon fiber fork, some fairly reasonable wheels as well, to be honest. And um, yeah, it should be set up pretty well. Oh, one point to note, I've actually upgraded the bike to have a small little ceramic pulley wheel on the back. I'm not sure that's really going to make much difference for the day, but it goes nicely with a blue chain ring and a red pulley wheel. Lovely. Should we get riding? So as we said, we're going to be riding the last 50 kilometers of Paris-Roubaix. We've plotted our route on Commute and we're starting in Bursay and we're finishing on a velodrome, which I'm very excited about. But between here and the velodrome, we have quite a few cobble sectors to manage. Um, not sure if the bikes are gonna cope very well, but there's only one way to find out. But if you do wanna ride this route for yourself, then click on that description in the link and you can follow it there. Right, Alex, are you ready? Yeah, I think so, yeah. 50 brutal kilometers <laughs> on cheap bikes. <laughs> and this is probably the furthest I've ever ridden on flat pedals. Yeah, um, you're gonna massively regret that. But hey -o, let's give it a go. <laughs> right, <laughs> let's go. Right. We've got a great oh, big brick. Cobble. What's the brick? Ah, my feet! <laughs> my feet are coming off the pedals! My feet are clipped into my thousand euro pedals <laughs> just fine. Oh, this bike is not built for comfort. Mine's got a really, so... really bad rattle already. <laughs> is that good? <laughs> I don't know. Right, first cobble sector done. How's that for you? Um, bike is making a lot of noises. A little bit worried, but now we're on this new tarmac, it's, it's okay again. It feels it feels like a dream on you now. I feel like I'm never going to take a smooth bit of tarmac for granted. We've only done the first I bit. I know, yeah. And one thing, this is not a good idea on cobbles. Feet are flying everywhere. How far have we done now? 48 to go. <laughs> we've done 2K. Yeah, we've done 2K. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, we better get cracking. Yeah. 
So I guess for anyone that sat watching this video, probably questioning why we're actually riding these bikes, I guess it's to see if it's possible to ride one of the toughest routes on one of the cheapest bikes because, well, if the answer is yes, it just means that it's another section of the sport which is even more accessible to people. I mean, the answer could be no. Well, but, there's only uh, one way to find out. There is only one way to find out. This is probably the best course for it because these bikes, they're going to go through a lot today. This one looks rough. But right, get in the right gear, so Manon, before you enter. Oh! Oh! No, oh, you're flying, Alex! Come on! The cool thing about riding on parts of iconic races like Paru Bay is you really do get into the mindset and you can really envisage what it's like when a race comes through here, when you're sitting on telly and you feel like you're in the moment and you can just really appreciate the, the effort all the riders are going through and think how absolutely crazy it must be on race day with everyone flying along here. The crowd lining the sides. Ah, oh, left man on the dead. Eat, eat dust. Oh, All right. There we go, yeah. Third cobble sector done. What's this one called? Pave de Pont Tibot. And that's 1,400 metres long. Great um, pronunciation of that. Yeah, Are you actually French? It's probably not the right pronunciation. <laughs> but, I'd, um, I'd say what blew and hilarious, following behind you, your rear derailleur over the cobbles is literally bouncing so much. Is it meant to do that? Bounce it a second. <laughs> it, literally, it literally does that the entire way across the cobbles. Yeah, it's, it's not going anywhere though. No, it's, it's all right. It's pretty sturdy. We're surviving, aren't we? Staying in one piece so far. 21 speeds hanging in there. Yeah. Come on. Triax, let's do this. Let's do Paribu backs. Paribu backs. <laughs> Come on then. 50 kilometers of it anyway. Right, we're currently cruising along this nice smooth bit of tarmac at 31 kilometers an hour. And I've got a cadence of 90 RPM, which feels like my kind of optimal setup for this gear. What about you? Yeah, I'm in my biggest gear. <laughs> my biggest rocket and yeah, it's quite nice, and it's surprising how fast and how good this bike feels. I thought I was going to get on it and it was going to feel like a tractor, but it's not that bad. No, they're doing it's all right. It's a little bit heavy, but it just still does feel fast on these roads. Well, when you're rolling along, it's not really that crucial, the weight of the bike. No. Um, but... So it's quite nice. Oh, this, this is gravel. Yeah. Whoa! Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh! That was scary. Hold your line. I just want to get off. <laughs> oh, this hands. is pretty bad, this one, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh. God, my hands. There we go. Oh, that feels so good. Oh, my poor arms are still vibrating. Okay, so we're halfway through our 50 kilometers, 25 kilometers to go until we get to the velodrome. We've averaged, what, 21 kilometers per hour so far? 21.9 to be precise. 21.9. <laughs> We've had quite a lot. I'm surprised how much cobble to road ratio there is. Yeah, this last, this. so the last section of the race, it comes like quite thick and fast. Yeah, it does. So it's like cobbles, little road section, cobbles. And I think that's why it sort of lends itself to the race really breaking up and you see so many different attacks. And it kind of, this sign is highlighting how tough this race is. We've only covered 25K so far. So far at this point, the riders in the men's race would have covered 228 kilometers and already covered some of the most brutal cobbled sectors. I mean, we've still got a couple of the toughest ones to go, but they'd be absolutely shattered by I, this I point. I couldn't imagine doing riding that far on cobbles. You, your body would be in agony by the end. My hands actually really hurt yeah. already. Crack on, shall we? Come to on. To the velodrome. So we've just been up this tiniest of little rises, but it does highlight 
the fact that this route is pretty much pan flat and it also highlights the fact that if we did have any sort of significant climbs I would be in real trouble. You would be in trouble. <laughs> Every time we hit cobbles. You're too busy changing gear. Oh, my saddle has definitely slipped down. 100% it's moved. These clouds. Oh, the rain. The rain oh, is starting. I don't like it. Please, please don't rain. Come on, we've got to get to the velodrome before it pours out the rain. Oh. Oh, it's actually sleet. Goodness me. Ugh. And Alex was saying how good the weather was earlier, and now it's just started to... I'm not sure if it's snow, sleet, or rain, but it's wet, and the cobbles are getting a little bit slippery, which I'm going to go a little bit cautious on. I do not want to fall off on these bad boys. Come on, be brave. This bit's 1.2 kilometres long. Oh. And it's a little bit wet on the cobbles. It's very slippy. Oh, oh dear. Oh. You know the cobbles are bad when you're literally looking at the side for a nice bit of mud to ride on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't like it. So just popped under nine kilometers to go and i'm really surprised how much this ride has taken out of me yeah like i'm actually tired yeah. 50 kilometers on the road it doesn't feel like a massive challenge really does it the 50 kilometers with cobble thrown in it it just ruins your body and yeah you watch Paru bay and cobble races on tv and yeah it looks hard but you just have no idea until you come here and do it yourself, do you? That's so true. I mean, yeah. it puts it into another sort of perspective. My back is actually quite sore. Yeah, every, literally everything is sore. My hands <laughs> feel like they're swollen because they've just been like bumping on the bars. My arms are aching. Part of me also feels like a bit of a, a bit of a cheat complaining about how sore my hands are. When I saw Lizzie Diner's hands after the race last year, they were literally blisters and bleeding. Yeah, I don't know how she would have done that. Oh, I love hearing man on changing gear, it's hilarious. How's it going back there with your gears? Not great. Good. There we go. So this section of cobbles is far better or well maintained compared to a lot of what we've already done so far. And it's actually used kind of like a bit of a cut through road which we see loads of cars going on whereas a lot of the other sectors that we've ridden through almost feel a bit more like we haven't seen any tracks. any cars on the other cobble sector yeah a lot we? more rough broken up whereas this is a little bit more modern and yeah. well maintained even a smooth track at the side but in the race this is uh sectioned off Barrier so the riders off, can't yeah. go on it right alex even as you think your bike is better than mine there's well, only it is. no there's only one way to settle this okay some bike top trumps all right. Are you, are you ready? Yeah. How many gears has your bike got? One. 21. Yeah, okay. How many chain rings has it got? One. Three. <laughs> um, what colour are your hubs? Uh, black. Gold. <laughs> what colour are your brake levers? Silver. Gold. <laughs> uh, have you got bottle cage screws? <laughs> no, I don't have those. <laughs> right, there's my point. My bike. Right, well, it's well, better. Well, well, Me and old tricks wait, here. Wait, wait, wait. What is your uh, seat post made out of? Alloy. Carbon. How much are your pedals? Well, I'd have to do a bit of calculation, but... I mean, the bike is £50. Yeah, so it's probably about £2. Okay, how much for mine? A thousand. thousand euros. I this win. This defeats the object of the challenge. More is better in every sense. I've got nothing to say. All right. See you at the velodrome. <laughs> no, I'll see you at the velodrome. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> right, we've stopped at a red light and we're in the town of Hem, which is one of the last places the race goes through 
in the final kilometres before reaching the velodrome. And, um, well, we're stuck in traffic, although hopefully I'll clear this up for the race. Yeah, hopefully. It's not got quite the same sort of vibe, has it, going through the traffic <laughs> jam at the end of a day <laughs> to no. the race? <laughs> uh, not quite so iconic. So, uh, man on it appears the gates are shut for the bit to get across to where the velodrome is. Yeah. I don't think our, our challenge classified as important enough to close no, the see, road. <laughs> you're telling me our, our cheap bikes versus 50 kilometers of Paris Bay doesn't count as a major sporting event? No. I, I, did, I did ask. Put I did a request to the local council. Yeah, <laughs> I did ask, ask them and they, they, yeah, they thought about it and they said no in the end. Okay. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to just pop on the. Yeah, no biggie, we'll just go yeah. round. You All right. could probably bunny hop that, but my bunny hop skills are non existent, so oh, I'm I'll... quite tired. Right, we're nearly there now. This is literally the last are. 20 metres. Oh. oh, the gate's shut. Again, always shut gates. Oh. Oh. It's like literally legit shut. <laughs> um, it's shut to the public. Oh. Are you telling Plus, me I rode 50 kilometres, 49 kilometres, not to ride on a velodrome? <laughs> <laughs> me and Trixie, I not even, happy about this. I don't even know what to say. Okay, we finally found our way into the velodrome. And I'm very happy I get to ride on the velodrome now. So one and a half laps yeah. to finish it off. Are you ready, Alex? I'm absolutely buzzing. I'm slightly disappointed. There's no one over at the finish line to ring the bell for us, you know, like they're doing the race. Yeah. Never mind, nonetheless, it's, it's pretty iconic. It cool is. Place to be. Such a cool velodrome. Um, right. Lap and a half, winner takes all. Let's go. Right, Manon, we've survived. I am going to say I did manage to just about edge you on the finish oh, by, line. By a tire width. By a whisker. That, yeah. Um, what an epic sort of few hours this has been. I mean, we've only scratched the surface of the route, really, compared to what the pros have to do. But in answer to our original question, can you ride the last 50 kilometres of Paris Bound and Cheap Bike? Yes, you most certainly can. Will we and the bike survive? Yeah, I yeah, think. we did. And I mean, at the start of this, I was convinced something was going to go wrong. We, we didn't even get a puncture. We were which I'm very, no very surprised. Nothing fell off the bike, which I was convinced it was going to happen. So yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised. I had one minor, minor issue. Um, my seat post slipped down, but it's got a quick release, so just put it straight back. Oh, that was to easy, it. easy to fix then. If you want to watch the actual pros race this very race, then you can do over on GCN Plus live and ad free. So make sure to go check that it's out. It's on demand as well if you miss it when it's live. Yeah. And also, I'm really keen to hear your thoughts on what you think of our own efforts today. So let us know in the comments section down below. And if you did like this video, give it a big thumbs up, share it far and wide with all your friends for them to see as well. And let us know whose bike you like the most.